Nostalgia is a beautiful thing. One moment you're just minding your business and all of a sudden... I like to cover mostly mobile games on this channel because that's the stuff I grew up with. However, that doesn't mean I don't still have fond memories of the Flash era. Fireboy and Watergirl, Grow Island, Happy Wheels, Impossible Quiz, Read to Bison, Queue Up, Hardest Game, Duck Life, and of course the legendary H4. However, talking about Flash games isn't particularly a novel concept. Everyone knows about the cream of the crop, and for good reason. But those aren't the only ones. So today I'd like to shine a light on the lesser praised Flash games. It is a little something for everyone. Because while they might not always be remembered, that doesn't mean they're any less interesting. Starting with... Kawaboom. On the surface, Kawaboom is just like any straight Angry Birds ripoff, with some character swaps. And sh sure, I can't really say anything to counter that, but that doesn't mean Kawaboom is a bad game. If you paint the Mona Lisa with a different face, it doesn't mean that it can be out of its own. Kawaboom does differ a bit in gameplay though. Due to the cows jumping instead of being swung, the distance from where you jump is also factored in instead of just the angle. The cows also don't die from fall damage or rubble like the pigs and angry birds, but need to instead fall outside of the target on the floor. The Kawaboom franchise consists of two games, with the first one just being Kawaboom and the second one being Kawaboom Lost in Time. Take a shot every time a game has a time travel sequel, I guess. Uh, they're fine, but they do noticeably stutter, and while having absolute bangers in their soundtrack, they do feel pretty repetitive at times. Sadly, none of the Cow Boom games are up to play anymore, so let's just say maybe they followed the Angry Birds franchise a <coughs> bit too closely. But who cares? With that said, let's just move on to our next, a bit more popular Flash game animal Snail Bob. Snail Bob needs no introduction. Does he belong in B tier? Maybe not, but you've got to give this to me, man. It's, it's my, my boy! boy. My boy! Choosing between the Snail Bob games is like picking your favorite child. Like, of course it's number 7, but we can't let the others hear that. People often say that there's some things that if you didn't experience them, that you didn't really have a childhood, and I think Snail Bob truly is one of those. For all of you unenlightened folks, Snail Bob is a point-and-click adventure game where you have to make your way towards an exit by interacting with the environment. The thing with Bob is that he can only move forwards or stop and duck into a shell. Later on he can turn around, but it's just not the same. Wow. Even when I was way younger, puzzles in Snail Bob never really pose a challenge. But I don't really feel that's an issue. It's almost like a WarioWare game, where you have lots of smaller micro games in a row. Also, for the fact that these are free games, the art style in the later games is really good and clean. So, for this reason, I graciously give Snail Bob 570 out of 10 Snail Emojis. Well done. Moving on. Wheelie. Wheelie is like Snail Bob, but without Snail Bob. Do I wish the Wheelie community a prosperous future? Of course. Do I think the Wheelie franchise are good games? Uh, maybe? Do I have much more to add? No, not really. So, moving on, Dr. Acorn. To be honest, I put Dr. Acorn mainly here to gouge how many of you actually know about him. I love Dr. Acorn, from the continuous levels to the obstacles to the main nut himself. To me, he just gives up everything I love about Slash games, and there's sometimes amateurish, but authentic and passionate feel. There's so many different kinds of web games out there, but this one just feels like it's the average of all of them. N not in a bad way, but exactly like every other game in this video. By just being itself. Aww. These games were never going to hit it big or blow up, because they didn't appeal to any particular audience. Rather show. These were games that someone poured time and effort into, and put onto the internet for free, just for people to enjoy. And I think that passion is what makes them work. They're like a warm embrace from a creator, showing you what he loves doing. 
These games are far from perfect, and that's why they don't pop up in the main discussions about Flash games. But to me, these forgotten and often even discarded games with the discontinuation of Flash show the true beauty of these web games. And a lot of them there are, both good and bad. So I encourage you, open up your local web game site and try them. The good, the bad and the ugly. Cause while maybe the game is lackluster, the memories and roast into glasses will forever make it worth it. With that said, I've been C Audio, and I'll see you later. Unless you'd like to check out my other videos, cause they're also totally free and you can see them here somewhere. I don't have a webcam. Maybe if you get me to 500, I'll uh, do a face reveal, no one cares. Bye bye.